everyone, Stephen Edwards here with you again. I've got another great short video for you here today. Before I get to that, I have a question for you. Did you do the dare I gave you from the last video? If not, make sure you go do that now before we go any further because it's the little things we do every day that ultimately lead us to our destination or our destiny. You know, if you imagine two ships about to set sail in a port, one is going to go at a 10 degree difference in the one. One is going to sail at a 10 degree difference. When they're actually sailing out of the port, it almost looks like they're going to the same place. But over the days and the weeks and the months, their journeys are completely different. So it's the little things we do every day. So just follow through. It may not seem like a big thing, but it starts to build the one thing that we must build in order to get what we want to get to in life, which is momentum. So if you did do it, congratulations. You move one step closer to creating quantum wealth in your life or welcome back. <laughs> so today we're going to look at another transparent belief or bogus belief as I call them. These are beliefs that create a knee-jerk reaction in us that when you say it, you just have a, an automatic response like time is money. Those are the things we say, but they have control over our life and our results. So another one that we're conditioned to believe from a very young, most of us, is that the harder you work, what? The more money you're going to make, right? But let's take a look at reality. As Dr. Phil would say, how's that working for you so far? And for most people, it's not that good. It may be pretty good for you, but could it be better? And as a quantum wealth entrepreneur, you'll adopt the belief that the harder you work, the less money you're going to make. In order to create freedom and wealth in your life, you have to do less so you can have more. Let me give you a, a, a real life example of this. If you think of Bill Gates, when he goes to the office, he goes to Microsoft, does he head straight for the shipping department to go help them pack the boxes of software so they arrive safely and on time? Well, of course not. Why not? Because he hates the shipping department. No, because he has other people to do that, correct? In fact, would it be fair to say that Bill Gates has little to nothing to do with the day-to-day -day operations of Microsoft. Would that be fair to say? Yes. How does he do that? Because he's leveraged himself and he has other people to do those things for him. That when he is there, he's focused on the future, not on what is happening today. In fact, he's got so good at doing those things and replacing himself that he doesn't even need to go into the office anymore and Microsoft continues to grow, expand, and become an even bigger company in the world. So. What he's done is he's leveraged himself to the point now where Bill Gates actually is playing a completely different game, isn't it? It's not about how much wealth he can build anymore. It's about how much of it can he give away? How much of his money can he give away during his lifetime in a way that positively impacts the world? He's become a philanthropist. And he's now the second wealthiest man in the world. And originally, the wealthiest man, Warren Buffett, gave him all his wealth gave his wealth to Bill Gates, so Bill Gates could go out and give his money away. So Warren Buffett even le leveraged giving his money away. Smart guy. But my point is, like John Paul Getty once said, I would rather have 1% of the efforts of 100 people than 100% of my own. And you've got to start to think like a wealthy person, like a quantum wealth entrepreneur in order to experience quantum wealth in your life. So where does it begin for you? It begins by thinking, what are the things you're doing every day that somebody else could be doing for you? What can you automate in your life and your business so you don't have to do it anymore? Because look at it this way. Let's imagine, let's imagine you're making $5,000 a month and you spend 40 hours a week making that. So that's a lot of hours a month. And how much does that come down to for every hour you put into your job, how much money would you be making? It comes down to $31.25. But what if you could make that $5,000 in six hours. That would mean you'd be making $833.33 .33 an hour. That changes things, doesn't it? So you might say, well, how do you do that? Well, there are lots of ways you can do that, but imagine if you're doing that. If you're making $833 for every hour you put into your business as a minimum wage, then would it make sense to try and do things yourself when you could pay someone $30, $40, or even $50 an hour to do it? It would make no sense, would it? And yet most people are so focused on trying to save money by doing it themselves, they never create wealth in their life. So we have to start to look at our transparent beliefs and see where they're actually holding us back from experiencing what we truly deserve, which is freedom. And thinking that if you're going to work your way to freedom, it's not going to happen. You've got to leverage yourself out of it. So how do you do that? What are some of the things you do? You've got to look at using other people's energy, other people's time, other people's knowledge, other people's money. 
So how can you start to do that? Well, maybe there are things you're doing every day that someone else could do for you for a very little amount of money. You know, you could get a virtual assistant. You can get a virtual assistant for four to twelve dollars an hour who can do work for you. And if you're making twenty, thirty dollars an hour, then it would make sense to get them to do the things that you don't need to be doing so you can focus more on the productive endeavors that will create more wealth for you. You could outsource your marketing or your sales. If you want to write a book, you can have someone write it for you. Have a ghostwriter write your book. You can go to guru.com and you can find most of these people right there. So these are ways that you can start to create more freedom in your life. But it all begins with the idea that working harder is not the way to do it. The harder you work, the less money you are going to make. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Make sure that you get yourself on the teleconference call that's coming up on Wednesday. Meanwhile, here's your dare for today. I want you to think of two things that you're doing right now that you could either outsource or you could automate so you can create more time and more freedom for yourself. Thanks for watching today. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye for now.